So namaste. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much. Hello. So um, good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for joining. It is a great, great pleasure to welcome you all, and especially our guest speaker, Princess uh, Vigyani Kumari uh, of Meha. And I would also like to say we always encourage your comments and um, I hope uh, we've had a few discussions earlier, some of the descendants of interesting um, people related to our talk are here today. Um, please, I would like to welcome you um, to speak up later, ask some questions, make some comments, so we'll have some really kind of history being recorded, so to say, in this event. This is part of our resilience lecture series, Resilience Historic Houses of India and their Custodians that we started last year during the pandemic. It has become a very important forum for um, the erstwhile royal families, owners of historic houses of India to share their view. They're not necessarily historians. They can be all sorts of things, sometimes art historians, um, managers, uh, lawyers, um, this is not an academic talk, but this is part of our knowledge exchange series. So we really hope that people who will see this series will be inspired to do further research. And this is one of the properties that hasn't been so well researched. And I think this is a wonderful opportunity for historians, architectural historians, conservation specialists, musicologists um, to do further research. This is a very special story we are going to hear today. It's unique to this particular property, but it's also related to the complicated and complex history of India. This is the story of incredibly talented musicians who brought their traditions and whatever they experienced from different cultural centers of India to this small place of Miha. And this is really fascinating to see how local history is connected with world history. This is also very much about living heritage. Living heritage in the way that this house is um, managed, is reinterpreted, is taken care of by their custodians, the owners of this family, and also by this musical tradition that is associated with this particular property. Apart from the people that we would like to honor today, this is also about a very unusual instrument, and I'm not going to say more because we'll hear much more about it um, from uh, the Vigyani Kumari. And I'd like to um, give you a little bit of a background and the setting of where we are. And I think I have to probably uh, just put this away so um, we can see the map a little better. So you see in red, this is where we are, Meha Palace on the map. And the other properties that you see here, and you have the regions of Bundelkhand, Malwa, Rajputana, the very important places where history, art, culture, architecture um, was created to still inspire us to this very day. The other properties that you see there are properties. I'm sorry, I hear some background noise. So Praveen, if you could please, un uh, if you could mute the other speakers. Thank you very much. So the other properties that we see are properties that we discussed in previous resilient lectures here. So we have Mohan Niva's palace. This is actually the family property of a student of mine. So it's really nice. The Center for Historic Houses has become this family for people who love historic houses, who are involved in their upkeep and in the study um, of these properties. And um, Orcha is something that I highlighted because it's such a famous um, and important um, building that I wanted to give you an idea. So also, if you wanted to visit some of these properties, once it's safe to travel again, you have an idea what other important sites are there. Bundi is a, um, a fantastic property we covered in um, our academic lecture series uh, last week. So, so this is probably number 19 or 20 of our resilience lecture series. I wanted to start with um, this quotation um, from this um, fascinating book on Begum Samru. And this is a topic we covered um, yesterday, which was a really intriguing talk. If you want to hear more about it, you can watch this uh, recording on our YouTube channel, Center for Historic Houses. Arguably, 
India has never known a darker age than that into which Fazana had been born. The half century between the demise of the Mughal Empire and the foundation of the British Raj was a period of such agonizing transition and upheaval that even nationalist historians have been driven to despair. Government collapsed over much of the country. Authority amounted to little more than the right enforced at sword point to extract revenue. War was the only constant. So we are trying to locate this property both geographically and historically. Many um, historic houses, many cities in India were, uh, came into being in the 18th century. And this is the kind of period that you're talking about that I described here and that we discussed um, last week in the lecture um, um, on Begum Samu. So we will find that some of the properties have fortified features uh, such as in forts. We can also see in the property we, we are discussing today. So we have the kind of continuation of history. We have the need for fortified architecture and we no longer have that in Europe, for example. So you often have 19th century forts or um, fortified elements of architecture when this was more or less a kind of medieval feature in, in, in Europe. And this is interesting to see how history is tangible, is part of the presence and is continued. And we'll, uh, we'll hear more about this in the talk today. What we see here is, a, is an early photograph, late 19th century photograph of um, the Kaiserwag in Lucknow. And Lucknow, as we all know, was a cultural center where the arts were celebrated and, and where the, here we see the, late, the last Nawab of Lucknow, Bajid Ali Shah, was a patron of the arts, of music, of literature, of poetry, of um, theater architecture, decorative arts, and so on. And when he was exiled in 1856, some of his um, court musicians and the famous musical tradition that he had um, um, supported went to Rampur. And here we see um, an early uh, photograph from the British Library of Kasbah Palace in Rampur. Again, we already had um, a really intriguing series um, of uh, lecture on uh, Rampur with the current um, Nawab of uh, Rampur and a scholar from the University of Göttingen. And um, some musicians of this famous Lucknow tradition ended here and they inspired the uh, particular uh, musician that is associated with the origin of the um, Meha musical tradition. And it is just fascinating to see that um, all of these famous traditions even you know, from a different religious kind of tradition are coming together and are leaving their traces. So we don't only have a kind of fusion in the architecture, but we also have it in other forms of art, particularly music. And this is the kind of short introduction I wanted to give to um, just locate the property. And I'd now like to uh, give a very warm welcome uh, to our main speaker who will, um, uh, speak about her property and uh, the history. The future, and I'll invite you after the um, discussion, after the lecture, to ask your questions and to have a discussion. And um, maybe also the other speakers that I mentioned, the other attendees who have a personal relationship with the story that is being told today. Thank you very much, and welcome. Thank you, Professor, for the warm welcome. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Professor, for the warm welcome. Um, I'll, I'll just uh, share the screen and start my presentation. Presentation is clearly visible. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. This talk is a part of the lecture series entitled Resilience Historic, uh, Historic Houses of India and Their Custodians. 
This is hosted by the Center of Historic Houses of India at OP Jindal Global University. I would be taking you through the visual tour of the Mayer heritage. And uh, this is uh, the title that I chose uh, since it's a journey of our uh, entire heritage of Mayer, the town, and of course, the Mayer family and the contributions made by the Mayer family towards the people of uh, Mayer. This is the coat of arms uh, that uh, the royal family has, and it says Praja Pal Mahipati, which means uh, Praja is the people. And uh, pal, uh, the word pal is palna karna in Hindi, which means nurturing the people. And uh, Mahipati is the king of that area. So it was the duty of the king to nurture each and every soul uh, in the town and look after them and nurture them. So that is what uh, the meaning of Prajapal Mahipati is. This is the bird, sorry. This is the bird view of the, uh, of the palace. And uh, I would be speaking uh, briefly about, uh, about Mayhar. It is a small town. It is a proposed district in the state of Madhya Pradesh. Uh, and it falls presently under the district of Satna. This falls under the, uh, the entire heritage circuit, as um, the professor had mentioned, that it falls under you know, the entire heritage circuit, which falls from, uh, which uh, uh, initiates from Orcha and then graduates towards Khajra or Panna. Uh, Bandhogar, so we have the national forest and uh, you know the the, the architectural um, uh, edifices over there that was created during the medieval period uh, uh, by the Chandelas and the Bundelas. So this is during that time that uh, this fort also was uh, made. You uh, predominantly uh, it was uh, dominated by Chandelas during that time, and the traces are yet found over there. Even in Mayhar, as such, there are constructions made, there are temples made uh, uh, by the Chandelas uh, uh, during the medieval period. Also, the uh, the region, this region was. Uh, divided into two clans that is known as Bundel Khan and the Baghel Khan. But there's an irony attached to it as in uh, this originally uh, fell under Baghel Khan and then it was taken by Bundel Khandis and then again came back uh, to the region of Baghel Khan. So the stories, I'll just uh, tell you the anecdote attached to it. It goes like um, uh, uh, this area, it, it was a military base for the Baghels, that is the state of uh, Riva and it fell under their dominance and then later on what happened was uh, since there was a dispute between the Bundel Khand uh, that is uh, Bundel Khandis were, uh, were uh, the, uh, the, the clan that belonged to uh, uh, Maharaja Chhatrasal so Orcha and uh, Orcha was uh, dominated by Mar Maharaja Chhatrasal and thereby during the dispute uh, between uh, the two uh, the two clans, that is the Bundel Khan and the Baghel Khan, uh, uh, this Maihar was captured by the Bundel Khan, that is the army of Chhatrasal, uh, under the under the commander and chief uh, uh, Thakur Sahib Baini, uh, Baini Singh Haju, who was my ancestor. Now our lineage uh, goes back to the Kachhava dynasty. Uh, we we come uh, we uh, come from Jaipur and uh, Alwar and because of some family dispute, they had come down to this area and they had joined the army of uh, uh, Maharaja Chhatrasal. And it was during his commandership that we had uh, captured this entire region. So uh, to honor him and to reward him uh, of his bravery, uh, Maharaja Chhatrasal uh, uh, and of course his son uh, Maharaja Ridesha uh, gifted him this entire region. Uh, as uh, to run as an independent state. And therefore, the Mayhar dynasty was as such founded in the 18th century by uh, Thakur Sahib uh, Bedi Singh Ji Haju, who was uh, then rewarded with many other things. And he was a great warrior. He also uh, finally, uh, you know, did not leave the services of Maharaja Chhatra, uh, Chhatrasal. He gave over the state, uh, uh, the administrative, um, 
functioning to his son that is uh, Raja Durjan Singh Ji. And that's when uh, Durjan Singh Ji took over and uh, developed the whole town. There were fortified walls built because there was a lot of plundering during those days. And to save the entire town out of these plunders, a uh, lot of, um, I mean, of course, protection, fortified walls were built around the town. Also, uh, there was uh, uh, a development uh, happening uh, in the town. There was a lot of hydraulic systems uh, built, steps, uh, steps walls, uh, step wells were built. Secondly, even uh, administrative units were uh, taken parts off. So a lot of development started taking uh, since then. And that's how the Maihir town started developing. They had, uh, even Durjan Singh gave his contributions to, uh, 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 to the temple. Now, I would just briefly like to speak something about Maihir. How did the name Maihir come? Uh, it is known as, uh, uh, as a Sakshakti Peet, which the story goes as, you know, when Shiva was carrying his mortal, uh, the mortal body of his wife, Sati, and uh, out of fury, he was, uh, you know, going around and Lord Vishnu, he ran the uh, Sudarshan Chakra on the body, you know, just to calm down his fury. Uh, that's when the necklace, the, the necklace of the uh, Sati, the, the Devi, the goddess, uh, fell in Maihar. And that is why it is known as Maihar, which means Mai. Mai is known as Devi and Har is known as necklace. That's how the name Maihar comes um, uh, 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 to us. Sorry. So uh, this is uh, these are our ancestors, and uh, late Maharaja H H um, uh, Raghuveer Singh Ji was the one where we got uh, uh, got our titles uh, as Maharaja. Earlier it was just Raja, and then we uh, got the title as Maharaja. Um, then, uh, then few uh, few generations down the line, it was Maharaja Brijnath Singh Ji who further developed the town, and he was a great patron of art, of music, and of a lot of other things. Also, he was a connoisseur of um, of. Uh, um, of beauty, you know. So uh, what happened was that uh, he really took keen interest. He was a very, very devoted uh, king and an exemplary uh, example of uh, of an uh, excellent administrator. He developed uh, the town entirely, set up a lot of administrative units. Also, he contributed uh, to towards education to uh, uh, and also he kind of um, uh, abolished the uh, the system, the sacrifices, the animal sacrifice system. <coughs> Sorry. Then he graduated uh, to inviting a lot of these uh, companies to develop uh, the Maihir town as such because it's entirely a lime, uh, a lime belt, uh, a limestone belt, and a lot of lime queries were uh, set up then. He was very enterprising. He sacrificed a lot of things. He gave a lot of lands to a lot of people uh, for uh, the development of town. And he has greatly contributed uh, to, uh, towards the working, towards uh, the town. And what today Maihar is, it is largely his contribution. The, the, um, I mean, there were a lot, lot of these water bodies also built for the, uh, for the benefit of the town. And the, Maihar never faced any scarcity of water. The lakes were so well connected over there that we never faced anything. So all such works were done by, uh, by these uh, great kings. And they had huge contributions made uh, towards the development of the town. Uh, this is my grandfather, uh, late Maharaja, uh, Maharaja Sahib Govind Singh Ji, and that's my, my father, late Maharaja Sahib Channamrit Singh Ji. Now, uh, the Mahir Palace, as I said, I had mentioned that uh, it was initially under, under the, Baghil, the, uh, the Baghil clan, and this is how we got it. Of course, I'm sure renovation must have taken place, but then you see the old structure, which is highly uh, gotten influence of the Bundelkhand uh, architecture, again, which uh, goes on uh, to speak about the amalgamation of both the Hindu and the Islamic technique. You would see the, uh, the salient features of the Bundelkhand architecture. I would just go make you go through the visual tour, uh, go, uh, you know, through the visual tour and, uh, 
state the specific features attached to this entire property. So uh, Maihir Palace, again, uh, now this uh, Kila over here is divided into two portions. That is one is the Hati Mahal and one is the Moti Mahal. Uh, and as we all probably know that, uh, you know, in, in those days, the ladies had a separate apartment and uh, the, the gentlemen had their separate apartment. This is how it was uh, uh, made. And it has all the salient features. I'll just take it, sorry. So you would see uh, it has all the features like you have eaves, you have, uh, you know, uh, these uh, eaves that are bracketed by, uh, uh, by, the, by the stones run around in the entire property. The Hindi word for it is chajja. Also, uh, there are domes, uh, there are canopies, there are uh, perforated, uh, uh, perforated uh, jalis. Then there are foliated arches. Uh, there are uh, uh, there are canopies uh, as well. Then there are pal palanquins, which you would witness uh, when you go through this entire tour. And I'm sure you'll be able to appreciate the same. Uh, see, this is uh, this is the jali work that I'm I'm talking about. Uh, the uh, the netted uh, netted thing. Now you see this structure on the left. It's it's a well actually. So the well is on the ground floor. You don't have to entirely go to the ground floor to fetch water. You can just directly stand there in the first floor where you are staying, and then uh, and then draw the water from the well directly. So you see the jali is here. That is there to protect that entire area where you can stand and fetch water. And there is this corridor running. This is mainly stone work that is done in this portion. This is the, uh, the interior uh, portion of the Hati Mahal where the ladies used to be staying. And there is uh, hardly any woodwork done in it. So as we all know that all, all old structures, uh, lime mortar was used in it. And this is entirely mostly stone work used. This is the palanquin uh, structure that I was talking to you about. This is also known as the palanquin, very typical of the Bundel Khandi uh, architecture that has uh, that had been used. And uh, also, you can see the terrace there uh, for the summer evenings. Uh, you know, that's when they used to have uh, strolls over there, and uh, they could enjoy the summer evenings, or you know, even uh, sit there, and that was just for leisure. You see there are these different stone carvings done uh, in different structures and you see uh, also there are these lotus petals, usage of lotus petals and uh, elephant uh, images. You, uh, along the, uh, the, the visual tour you'll also come across where there are motifs made of fishes uh, and a uh, lot of these, uh, uh, these uh, religious uh, motifs made where it has uh, importance mainly on energy because as uh, you know hindu religion really believed a lot of uh, energy so uh, since maihar also is uh, you know it, the the vortex of energy is quite strong over there since it's a shakti peet apart from that uh, also in hindu a lo lot of importance was given to these uh, these such motors because they signified abundance and uh, you know it really gave a lot of positive vibe in the entire area so lotus has its own significance elephant has its own significance fish has its own significance this is the interior of the hati mahal where you can see uh, aves that is the chajas rested on the stone bracket running all over the rooms again you can see on top you can see some uh, canopies there which again has an Islamic influence along with the Hindu techniques used. Here, these are connectors uh, used along with the palace, uh, along uh, uh, with, the, uh, 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 um, I mean, uh, these are the connectors used to connect each portion. So if you want to go from Hati Mahal to Moti Mahal, you know, these are the kind of connectors that uh, had been used. So you can go, uh, you don't really need to enter from ground, the ground floor. You can also go from the terrace itself and see how beautifully they have been carved on stone. Now, these are the canopy structures where, uh, you know, you could, uh, you know, you could, um, uh, announcements were made from here. Also, flowers were showered from here. They, uh, you even, uh, uh, you know, they could just sit and, uh, 
uh, then you know uh, even it was used for certain weapons if in case if it was necessary to use this is the facade of the old palace that you had seen earlier in the night view also here these are lime plaster motifs used carvings that have been made uh, on the left hand side you could see so uh, the petals the lotus lo uh, the lotus petals that that's just coming out also you can see the elephant trunk you can see some fish over there you can see certain flowers these are the motifs that was made by lime plaster these are the the foliated arches and also perforated jalis that i was talking about which is made out of uh, mud shells beautifully beautifully put together to make these different and you would observe that all the jalis are very different they are not in a similar uh, structure there you know the some are symmetrical some are oval some are uh, round you can just have a look here i had said how animals also now lion is something that uh, speaks of power you see a peacock also in the center there are these certain figures made the dolls these are all auspicious uh, uh, figures that uh, that have been used and you see the jali work that has been done now that these are these uh, stone carvings that have been done on the columns ornamental carvings this is the central courtyard of the moti mahal this is the portion where the men used to stay and uh, hathi mahal was the portion where the ladies used to stay this is the courtyard it has got two story structure these are the jharokas uh, uh, made in uh, certain portions of the palace this is uh, the rear view of uh, the old palace and you can see the domes you can see the canopies you can see the eaves you can see jharokas both on the left and the right hand side this was one of the gate and you can see uh, there are these hidden spaces for discharging weapons if you can see uh, observe uh, minutely uh, you would see that uh, there are these holes through where they could discharge these weapons like spears and arrows and uh, cannons this was all to protect them from the invading uh, army and since we all know that uh, uh, you know these uh, structures were uh, chosen at a site where uh, water body was existing since it would protect them from the invading uh, uh, army over there again you can see it is uh, these jharokas were also made uh, you know to beautify the entire place you know otherwise probably it would look very plain so i presume that that was also one of the reasons why such structures uh, uh, you know you could see this is a watch tower in the towards the end of the the uh, the building opposite in fact where you could have a view uh, the entire view uh, to to the town and also you could see devi ji from here that is the temple of marshal the god of learning you could see it from here these are the cenotaphs uh, of the ancestors and uh, this is this was made in memory of the deceased uh, and uh, to and to have the permanence of uh, of their name and their contributions also made towards the society and to, to uh, towards the people uh, of their area now this is uh, this is where the new palace starts from so if you could gather you know the old old portion if you can see on the uh, left hand side minutely it's like now the extension uh, took place in the Uh, in the 20th century by my great grandfather that is maharaja brijnath singh ji and he extended this uh, property and made this with a, with a european influence and this is mainly built uh, on the structure of uh, on uh, uh, yeah on on the theme of indo sarsanic it has a indo sarsanic influence you could see that you know in the medieval uh, times uh, 
there were the buildings were used uh, the buildings made were of impregnable and inaccessible <coughs> inaccessible uh, 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 forts were made in order to uh, protect their sovereignty and possessions uh, of their property to safeguard them from these uh, enemies and surely they speak about the grandeur of that uh, that period so this is the, the the facade of the new palace that i was speaking about so that was the rear view and this is the facade you enter from here and you graduate towards the darbar hall this is where a lot of uh, the musical functions and all used to take place and the darbar that is the king used to hold uh, their uh, darbar over here you can see this is beautifully arranged uh, with lot of uh, lot of uh, furniture that has uh, that has a european influence which you would later on see these are the paintings that have been put up and this is the old palace uh, um, the, the 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 palace the new palace in fact but then uh, it was this is how it originally looked and that's the painting uh, done by uh, dr tk mitra who was called specially to make these paintings and these these paintings uh, are put up in the whole of the bar hall uh, which is around i believe uh, six of them are there and all these paintings have uh, show the entire town so this is one of the painting then we have uh, other play, uh, other uh, images of the whole town now this is uh, this is the music room that uh, where baba alauddin khan with his uh, disciples practice and this is the room which uh, where uh, pandit ravi shankar ji and uh, uh, ali akbar khan ustad ali akbar khan sahab and all practiced over here along with my uh, great grandfather maharaja sahab rajnath singh ji and of course uh, his great guru, guru that is baba alauddin khan sahab uh you can see this uh, ceiling has a doomed uh, a doom structure because you know so as to uh, make the sound waves even more effective this is a dining that has got a uh, uh, french decor and this this portion has a lot of uh, use of uh, the terrazzo uh, details that you could observe and art decor was one of it that was used you as you can see in the ceilings this is another dining setup this is this is one of the rooms uh, again um, uh, one one of the rooms in that entire apartment where you could see sorry this uh, there's a little uh, mistake done on the writing um, uh, the ceiling here you could see it is of metal casting and has got a lot of european influence in it and you could also see the walls uh, that has got handcrafted uh, uh, handcrafted ceramic tiles that has been used along the wall if you could observe minutely this is again terrazzo floorings and columns used in the apartments the panels are also created by the same these are some of the furnitures of the palace which again has a lot of european influence if you would observe yeah this is the darbar hall furniture these are these are the furnitures of the 19 uh, 20s 1930s uh, you can see the, uh, the 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 mountain there that is the this is the west view from the palace and it is uh it you can see the sharda devi temple that i was talking about directly from the palace this is a private lake that falls within the premises of the palace and uh, uh presently presently there's uh, less water here but then uh, yes uh, uh, there was uh, it was just full of lotuses during those times this is the south view of the palace and this is vishnu sagar again named after one of my ancestor uh, and his uh, cenotaph was also built over here 
uh, which right uh, probably you could not you cannot see it right now in the in the picture here but uh, here the appeal to the government that we are just uh, you know appealing to the government to get this lake de uh, deepened up because uh, the town is facing a lot of scarcity of water you know uh, as i had mentioned earlier that there was a, you know the system the hydraulic system was so uh, so well organized that my town as such never faced any scarcity but now i'm observing that they are and uh, you know there are a lot of lakes uh, in and around uh, my here but now gradually they all are just dying off and there's an absolute erosion now i would come uh, to the chapter of speaking on baba alauddin khan sir who who was uh, the guru of uh, maharaja brijnath singh ji and when uh, he was uh, you know, called as in uh, he was specially called by my uh, great grandfather maharaja sabrijnath singh ji uh, to uh, uh, to the court of myher uh, maharaja sab had once gone to calcutta and he had heard him there when he had played the uh, the rag shri and uh, that's when he 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 was uh, a seeker my great grandfather he was a seeker and he really was looking for a uh, for a guru who could teach him and uh, be with him so he took permission from uh, uh, wazir khan sahab that is baba alauddin khan sahab's uh, 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 guru and uh, he seeked his permission to take him uh, to the court of myher and then thereby then uh, after after the grant of his permission baba was allowed to come and he played for uh, he played uh, certain uh, uh, notes for maharaja sahab uh, over here in in my here and maharaja sahab requested him that you know baba should stay back and uh, not go and uh, you know take him accept him as his disciple so that's when uh, this entire association happened and maharaja sahab brijnath singh ji uh, uh, became his first disciple and a very very devoted disciple of uh, baba sahab uh, alauddin khan now baba alauddin khan sahab was of course as we all know he was a doyen in the uh, a doyen of uh, classical music in the 20th century and he was a multi instrumentalist who knew almost all the instruments and he was an expert an expert to really uh, uh, i wish we could all see him but you know his work still speaks his of his excellent uh, excellency so now uh, we i'll just uh, i'll just take you uh, towards what he actually created and how the association really worked magic for the entire country and probably for the entire world okay so uh, now i'll just tell you a short anecdote uh, attached to this uh, myher band the word myher band came uh, it is not a typical band band that we uh, know of this has a meaning it is ba a band means bandhna that is you know to to uh, to attach to uh to bring together that is what in hindi bandhna means so myher as i told you that it is my kahar that is the necklace of goddess and also the home of goddess sharda so in her necklace all the notes all the musical notes are tied together that is what the meaning of myher band is and this was um, this was conceptualized initially in 1918 but the first public appearance was done in 1921 now the story how it goes is that uh, of course there was a deep connection between the two of them that is uh, the guru and the disciple uh, baba alauddin khan sahab and uh, maharaja brijnath singh ji when uh, of course i'm sure you know they would be discussing the current affairs that would be going on in the, uh, during those days and there was uh, since there was a hit of the epidemic uh, influenza and plague i believe over uh, that time you know there was a concern where what could we do and contribute to uh, to the orphans of that area and also they wanted to create something uh, in a very unique uh, which had a unique character uh, uh, which had a very unique character so they thought of creating a, a, a orchestra you know uh, a team of uh, a team where they could come up with something very unique and contribute to the society in large and create a name for myher as such so this is how the idea came up and uh, when uh, maharaja sahab and uh, baba alauddin khan sahab they discussed and then that's how they came up with this idea they took all these uh, youngsters and they trained them 
and came up and bloomed this entire idea of my headband. Okay, so one of the very unique features of uh, uh, the very unique instrument of our Mahir Gharana is the Nal Tarang. This is made with the with the uh, with the purdy gun barrels and uh, made to create a, a beautiful sound, a beautiful note. Now the story goes that when uh, these two, the the guru and uh, the disciple, they were uh, rehearsing and they are riyasing. The word is riyas. So they were um, rehearsing. That's when the guard, you know, it, the gun fell out of his uh, out of his hand and went cascading down the stairs. And the notes that came out, you know, it drew Baba's attention and Baba was like, Maharaj, did you hear this? So Maharaj was like, what was it? And then Baba was like, drop it again. And the guard was really so scared and out of fear, he's like, okay, I'll, I'll still make an attempt. And he again dropped it. And when again they heard the news, that's when the idea clicked and they said, Let, why not create something out of it? So that was the beauty and that was the music, uh, magic that was created uh, by using. And of course, the contribution was made by uh, Maharaja Sabrinath Singh Ji using, his, uh, using the guns then. And of course, needless to say that there was not just few guns that were used. There were a lot of guns used just to create the right note for the, uh, for the instrument. This is only there uh, in the entire world with us, uh, with uh, the Maihar Dharana, and there is no other instrument ever created of this kind. These are again, all these instruments were handcrafted, uh, handcrafted by Baba and his uh, brother, and they were specifically only crafted for uh, the Maihar band. I would make you hear. I would want you to close your eyes and just go through, uh, just hear the notes, you know, they are so beautifully uh, made. So I'll, I'll speak, there is this, uh, you can see on, on, the, on the right hand side, there is an instrument known as the Chandra Saran, which is an amalgamation of Sarod, violin uh, and, uh, and uh, Sarangi. So I'll just make you hear. Uh, how it sounds and then the second note that you would hear the second sound that would you you hear that would be of naltara <laughs> So uh, the first one was uh, Chandra Sarang and the, the second one, the latter was uh, Nantara. I would want you all to hear a rag uh, of the whole, uh, uh, a rag uh, which the Maihar band plays. Close your eyes and just enjoy the music. that was played i'll also speak uh, okay so the, uh, so uh, this is uh, ustad uh, at sd david saab performing at the mahir palace itself and we often organize such uh, uh, functions and they come to the palace and perform so david saab is uh, unfortunately no more there uh, no more there with us but uh, yes his memory is strong and I would, uh, so the rag that I would be playing uh, now is known as the, the, uh, the Bandesh Volga. And Bandesh Volga was composed by Baba in the, uh, in the, by the banks of Volga in, in Russia. And uh, there you would see that, uh, you know, the uniqueness of this band is that sometimes it, it uh, you know, created, it, it held the fusion of both uh, East and the West uh, together. So you would just uh, see that in this uh, rag. Also, I would like to mention that uh, 
Baba's uh, Baba trained uh, trained Ali Akbar Khan Sahib, who Ustad Ali Akbar Khan Sahib, who is the world class Sarod player, and he was his own son. Also, uh, uh, the sitar maestro Pandit Ravi Shankar Ji, who was his son son uh, son in law, and uh, Anpurna Devi Ji, who was uh, his own daughter. And of course, there are many uh, to follow, but uh, these are the uh, people who made it uh, big in the world of uh, music history. So they all belong to the Mahir Dharana. I'll just play the Bandish Volga. <laughs> So this is the Mahir band again uh, playing uh, at the palace here for us. This is my mother encouraging Rajmata Saab Kaviteshwari uh, Devi and Maharaj, my brother Maharaja Saab uh, Aksharat Singh Judev, who's encouraging uh, the, the new members of the Mahir band. I would like to mention the Mahir band is really struggling hard to sustain themselves because now there are only two members left from the uh, from the original uh, group and now almost everyone has retired. The unique characters is the uh, the uniqueness of uh, the the Mahir band is almost almost dying and uh, you know we would really want uh, want support in this. Uh, uh, in in this section uh, in this uh, section because we, i mean our appeal to the government is that they should give absolute attention here because this is a national heritage and also i would say uh, probably a world heritage and we we should not let it die because you know it has been made when when music and uh, when melody and harmony you know when it uh, when when it comes up it really touches the soul and uh, soul of 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 of, of of a person with absolute grace. And I believe that such unique characteristics uh, of this particular uh, indigenous uh, orchestra should not just die off and just, uh, you know, uh, be spoken as history. I would want it as, uh, as a living uh, entity always. So our uh, appeal, uh, in fact, to the government uh, is, uh, is that, you know, they, they should support these, uh, uh, these new members who are coming up and uh, also encourage them and uh, uh, encourage them in the sense, also support them towards their livelihood because that is one major concern that has been there with the previous members and also the new members now. But uh, if they could, you know, open up some, uh, some support system, it would really help this band from not dying off. Also, there are just two members left. That is uh, Dr. Ram Suman Kumar and uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Ashok Barulia, who is, uh, uh, who is who are willing and who are really wanting to teach the youngsters, but the the uh, new people. But uh, unfortunately, we aren't getting uh, many because uh, you know they have their own fears in mind. That what is the future in music? They don't see any future in music. So probably it is uh, all these. Uh, uh, all these great musicians who could just show them the importance and you know encourage them to carry on uh, this whole legacy it would really be a blessing for all of us 
this is ragmata saab uh, kaviteshwari devi honoring an artist during the musical festival so every year there is a musical festival uh, held on baba's name that uh, on baba's name and uh, wherein all these artists they come and celebrate his uh, legacy and uh, pay a tribute to him this is another one of the pictures from the samharo from the function this is uh, the contributions made uh, uh, towards the society by my uh, mother she or organizes these workshops wherein she encourages the locals so here you can see a workshop held with the team of intact for uh, agarbatti making and also uh, embroidery that is the shadow work now since uh, mayur has religious importance so you have lot of these uh, indian gurus and saints coming up someone like uh, even padma bhushan uh, awardi um, uh, awardi uh, that is uh, shri m and uh, even uh, respected uh, uh, shri shankracharya ji also has paid a visit to the palace and many such other saints also keep coming to the palace and gracing us uh, with blessings these are the tourists we so myer palace is run as a homestay as well there where there are you can see there are tourists run, uh, coming and uh, interacting with rajmanta sab and rajmanta sab takes special attention to host them this is the on the right you can see the present family of the myer uh, uh, myer royal family that is my mother my brother and my sister in law Uh, standing uh, maharani sab uh, swarnim kumari there are these tourists also we actively pay uh, participate in the local functions where there is lot of local uh, where there is lot of interaction with the locals there and you can see uh, on the right hand side there is this mustival a uh, muslim festival that is being performed where my mother and my brother both actively uh, participate in it and um, yeah so there are a lot of these uh, local festivals such as tajia there is there is something known as uh, uh we all know of course dashera dashera is a very important festival for all all of us for all the rajputs and uh, there is something known as khajlaiya very patent to that entire area where they exchange uh, wheat grass and uh, to this was done actually to you know remove the fear from the public and they could have direct inter interactions with the uh, royal family and the king and this tradition has been going on right from uh, when the state was uh, founded uh, Uh, so uh, the uh, you know since i told you that my here is centrally located in this entire heritage circuit uh, there are a lot of uh, i mean the in the tourist interest would be national parks are around uh, of course architectural st uh, structures are there where you could make historical studies you could do temple touring you could do uh, village touring there are a lot of there's lot of natural beauty in that entire area where there are waterfalls and a uh, lot of other things so uh, excursions you can perform some excursions there's local art uh, appreciation rejuvenations there are lot of healing programs that can be held even in the palace because palace has got uh, palace palace has uh, huge premises so lot of activities can be conducted there such as many uh, functions many shows uh, that can be performed at held there so this is a uh, the heritage uh, heritage uh, circuit that i was talking about and the place is close in proximity to my here you could just see the kilometers like khajrao is just 135 kilometers chitrakoot is 116 bandogarh is 90 panna is 94 orcha is 293 and uh, this is how uh, you could travel uh, make uh, my here as a center place and then travel in and around the entire area so uh, i end this and uh, uh, thank you so much for inviting me and having me uh, in this show and giving me an opportunity to share the lineage and the heritage of my uh, family thank you so much thanks so much i'm still in awe and i think you know everyone who's here who's present will understand the significance and the importance to have someone from the property really speak and this is different from historians we need both sides because i think we've gained so much insight we've, we've heard things that we wouldn't otherwise know and this is really fantastic and from the center for historic houses i can say we really want to offer you all of our support i've already spoken to professor philip bowman who is a really inspiring a fantastic ethnomusicologist he is also um, a, 
has received the Dent Medal, which is the equivalent to the Nobel Prize in Musicology. And he's deeply interested in, in Indian music. He has also published, uh, and he's aware of this. Unfortunately, he's not very well at the moment. He's um, undergoing an operation, and uh, but uh, he, he would like to support this and also speak to his students, and I'll be in touch again with him. I'm sure in him we found a wonderful supporter of this, and I really believe we have to do something about this. Um, so um, thank you very much. Um, I'd like to encourage the audience to ask some questions. I, I know some people are present to have a personal connection. Please, um, if you would like to speak out. Otherwise, I also have a number of questions despite having met and so on several times. There's always something new. Thank you very much again for this fantastic uh, insight. Thank you. My yes, I mean, the audience, please, you can unmute yourself for this and maybe um, Praveen from IT, maybe we can stop the live streaming here so we can have the discussion uh, uh, um, among, among ourselves and people might not feel um, awkward or too shy um, about this. Um, so yeah, really fantastic. Of course, um, you know, what we've seen is really a fusion of so many different things different religious practices that come together, cultural practices that sees their becoming religious, you know, because uh, these musicians, although they kind of came from a specific religious tradition, they created something independent from this. Um, speaking a language, aha, there here we have um, Ashar Khan, wonderful. Yes, please, he has the relationship and he is a relative directly from um, um, from Rampur. Please, I'd like to open, um, um, I'll, can you unmute yourself, please? I have, I have unmuted myself, I feel. Okay. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, good evening, everybody. I'm the great grandson of Ustad Wazir Khan Sahab of Rampur. And uh, I will narrate an interesting incident related to Alauddin Khan Sahib. And uh, congratulations to Rani Sahiba. She has uh, introduced the whole concept and uh, her uh, kingdom in uh, great detail and about the music also. Uh, the, regarding the incident, I want to tell that many years after the death of Wazir Khan Sahib, Alauddin Khan Sahib came to Rampur to attend the Rampur exhibition. At that time, my maternal grandfather, Imtiaz Ali Khan Sahib, was present in the exhibition. Somebody told Alauddin Khan Sahib that Imtiaz Sahib is the nephew of Wazir Khan Sahib. On getting this information, Alauddin Khan Sahib came running towards Imtiaz Ali Khan Sahib and as a mark of respect, touched his feet for blessings. This incident was narrated to me by Imtiaz Ali Khan Sahib in 2016. Imtiaz Ali Khan Sahib was the maternal uncle of my mother. He expired in January 2018. So this was an interesting incident, which I, I can quote. I have many more incidents, but uh, that will be later in some other event. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was too fast, actually. I'm not used oh. to these uh, webinars. No, wonderful. I'm so grateful. And thank okay, you very thank much you. for speaking up because, you know, everyone is listening and so on. But it's really nice when you contribute, when you participate. We really encourage this and especially during the pandemic, right, when we cannot travel, cannot go out. This is a fantastic forum, really, for, bring, for bringing together people from all over the world. Thank you for this comment. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. Um, well, yes, I also thought, you know, maybe it would be nice to involve Anushka Shankar, um, um, you know, to follow up this tradition because she's very well familiar with it. And I think this would be fantastic support and, and would be really, really important uh, for, for you, for the property. The question I wanted to, uh, do we have another question there? Yes, please. She, Shezala. Uh, good evening, Professor. Thank you. Uh, it's Shezala. Uh, thank you, thank you, uh, thank you for a wonderful presentation. I, I was very fascinated by the the history and the legacy, and and you know it's um I couldn't help but um, uh, be fascinated by the idea of growing up with such a legacy. So I think um, uh, I mean that's very it's a very fascinating story, and I I'm, I'm, I couldn't help but you know um, I couldn't help but think actually that uh, like I I have been born and I, have, I was born and raised in India and um, uh, the fact that you know you hear so much about maybe Jaipur or Udaipur and you know you hear about these places but um, a lot of it also has to do with our education like we see a lot of prominence of certain places in education and I couldn't help but think that maybe 
uh, another way to sustain this legacy would be to provide uh, maybe more references to Meher in our education system. And, uh, you know, uh, maybe lectures in history or classes in history. Like, I think um, um, a lot can be done by inclusion of the legacy in our curriculum. So I thought maybe I'll just, you know, put it, put it across as a, as a suggestion or an idea, because I think it's a very fascinating story and it deserves to be told to more people, especially more kids growing up in the country. So, yeah, so that's, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you very much. And I must say, of course, the Center for Historic Houses is specifically dedicated to this, right? Because this is where the academy comes in. And I'm offering courses. I'm offering courses on the history of interior design in India, East meets West. I'm, I'm offering uh, courses on the history of conservation, history of historic houses in India. And, you know, I think some of the courses I've designed are really unique. And um, I'm very pleased to say that many students from the erstwhile royal families are attending the class. And, and I think to, to some extent, as you say, it is quite unusual. And I think especially academics have a tendency to focus on the negative, on problems and so on, and not so much on something that inspires us, that, uh, that is you know, beauty and, and um, art and, and positive aspects. So this is something that I'm trying to do um, at um, you know, Jindal University at the School for Art and Architecture. Thank you. Yes, Harsh, please, and, and, and Philip, then. Uh, yes, thank you so much, you know, uh, for a wonderful presentation. Uh, I've been to this place, being a mining lawyer to this area so many times. So mm -hmm. I've been to a beautiful landscape and I see a lot of uh, ancient uh, buildings around, but uh, they are not being taken care of. And then I've been to the temple, which is an amazing, amazing and a spiritual site. So if I look at uh, Mahir, I find it is a, uh, a place which has got a sacred landscape, being a temple, which has been a, a great influence to that area. I can have the legacy of this royal family. Then I can see a lot of mining activity, which is going on for the last 200, 300 years out there. So this is an amazing combination of heritage. And uh, I, I being a, uh, associated with the government of uh, Madhya Pradesh, I would really would like to put whatever effort I can put into it. I just would like to know what exactly for conservation of this place exactly at, at present happening. Is there anything happening? Because when we go there, we just pass through the city. We just cross from, uh, from Jabalpur to, to Bandhagar or to, to Satna, to, to Khajirao or to Riva, or just go to the temple uh, because of the trolley. We just go in no times these days, uh, pay our, you know, get the, uh, the, seek the blessings and push off. So I just would like to know what exactly, which authority is looking after it and making it, it has got a tremendous potential to be a heritage center because we are working for Orcha and Gwalior because UNESCO has taken it, uh, taken up it, uh, taken this from these two cities as uh, the uh, historic and urban landscape. So I am the consul to these, uh, these areas. So I just would like to know and if I can contribute in any way uh, to, to work uh, this forward. I just would like to know what's happening because it's, it's a combination of a spiritual site, royalty, as well as the mining. Amazing. Thank you so much. That's such a noble thought. And uh, uh, thank you so much for proposing uh, this idea. In fact, uh, you know how you could really help us through what be that, uh, I mean, just for your knowledge that government is really not uh, intervening uh, uh, towards the private property, whatever it has intervened, yes, uh, towards uh, the uh, Mahir Gharana, because now, of course, it has been taken over by the union government, but uh, it needs personal attention. You know, it is like, okay, they are being paid, but, uh, you know, nothing has been taken care of. There are, as I told you, that there are just two members left, and further on, then what happens? We don't know. You know, we don't know the future of Mahir band. There are just two members left now, and they would want to contribute to the next generation, but then there's no one to learn because there's no security of livelihood. I mean, they would be the first question they would say that, how much time could be given? Who would look after our family? You know, so these are the little uh, uh, the little concerns that the government to pay attention to. Firstly, the secondly, as you saw that there, you know there are so many such buildings that really needs attention of the government, which is of great heritage importance. And I personally feel that you know it should not die because I'll tell you in Hindi what they say ki ye to khandar ho rakha hai, isko ab jaane do. You know they just want they just think it to be a dilapidated uh, place and uh, it should just be gone. You know so they come up with a lot of people. Uh, 
entrepreneurs they come up with the idea why don't you just you know just uh, break this this wall and then create a building out of there i'm like no this cannot happen because it has so much of uniqueness to it you know and especially such place where there's fusion of everything there's so much i mean heart and soul put by those people into these uh, properties it should just not die off so uh, somebody has to come do these studies there in that entire area and uh, you know discuss it with the members of the of the area the government of course i would say you know trinity should be formed or maybe a trinity form formula where in the royal family is included people are included and also the participation of the government so probably you know we all can work out things together this is uh, uh, it needs attention surely and when yeah. there's absolute negligence uh, by the government i must admit and this is something that the center is lobbying for right um, to really uh, showcase the importance of the private um, owned historic houses uh, for the general community it's not only their, about their own property but it's all the other things that come with it and i think everyone who's seen the lecture series the resilience lecture series that by the way you can watch on youtube you can also watch previous ones every single one every single owner is a is a, is, is a testament to this of you know being involved in education poverty alleviation animal welfare so many other aspects uh, uh, you know creative industries and so on and i think that needs to be recognized the european historic houses association has done a very extent an extensive study of about one year they they worked on this and they showcased this for the european parliament i think we need to do the same for the indian context and this is obviously one of the main concerns of the center Thank you for pointing this out, Philip. And uh, next, please. Oh, thank you, Mimi, and Rani. Thank you for a, a fascinating talk this afternoon, or this evening. There, of course. And I wanted to ask you: during your talk, you mentioned the use of lime plaster for um, hand carving decorative elements of the palace. Do you know if those skills still survive today locally? uh yes no it does not that is one major challenge that we are presently facing and i believe all the craftsmanship that really uh, is right now existing is all in rajasthan you know uh, so and Some nobody nobody is ready to even take up this um, uh, this course because you know they say that even if i learn it'll be only used in the palace where else would be used because these days nobody appreciates all these things so you know i mean the the charm of all these things has not been told to the uh, the the new generation you know they don't even know what all these things are you know how the carving what is the beauty of these carvings why all these things were used uh, to decorate so they they are not interested and nobody is even ready to carry on uh, their uh, the legacy of all these things so uh, yeah unfortunately uh, we are struggling to find the, those craftsmen in that area Well, thank you. Sadly, that's a familiar tale. Yes. Um, but uh, there's, there's there is support available uh, in in various uh, um, certain certainly here in the UK that those skills are alive and kicking, um, and there are opportunities for students from India to visit and train here in the UK and vice versa. Yes, Philip. And in this case, I'm in touch with the British Council. You know, I would be the first one to. You know, I have invited you. I'd love to. You know, uh, collaborate with you on a project and 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 be. We've been in touch. I really hope we'll find the funding for this. There's also another fantastic organization that works internationally, which is called Intbau, which is under the patronage uh, of His Royal mm -hmm. Highness the Prince of Wales, and um, they uh, they. they are there to ensure that traditional um, architecture is uh, maintained encouraged taught and uh, they work they have an india chapter as well i'm in touch with them so this is the nice thing of the center we are in touch with the families here in india but also internationally with the various organizations and the, the latest thing that we will be doing is um, a, a palace museum network which will be starting from september which is very exciting some of the world's greatest curators from the leading museums in the world including from the louvre um and the courtwood institute and other uh, fantastic organizations to offer workshops for small palaces and museums uh, as far as curation is concerned conservation museum education um so i also really hope because currently you know all of this is my own initiative but we need also funding and so on that we can do these things and can do mm -hmm. more and we can multiply these efforts 
thank you, Philip. And you know, thank I would you. love to involve you. You know, I mean, I'd be very honored indeed if you could <laughs> participate in this scheme. You know the supports here. Thank you very much again. Thank you. Um, yes, are there some other questions? No, um, I would like to ask also quickly, we, we, uh, um, we just maybe just a few minutes. Uh, so it's too fascinating to see the fort part and then the kind of modern palace. Is the fort being used at the moment and how is it used? And um, maybe uh, what are the things you, um, you can envision? I think you seem to be really open to ideas and collaborations. You mentioned a number of things in, in, that you would like to do, but I'd be interested in this. And, uh, and what happened to all the uh, old furniture and so on, also from the early 20th century? Do you still have all of these things? And then do you have an archive with letters? And do you have any um, um, artwork um, that is older, I mean, from the 18th century and so on, any kind of miniature paintings or something? Okay, uh, so the furniture that was there in the killer, that is the fort, uh, we do not have, unfortunately, we do not have those because uh, probably, uh, you know, the, the place of residence, I mean, before my great grandfather, uh, they used to be staying there, but once the new palace was made, everything, everyone shifted uh, to this area. So uh, there was no one, uh, you know, we didn't use it as a residence residence, but yeah, on and off, sometimes we use it for functions over there uh, to host any functions. And and uh, also as kids, you know, uh, the well that I showed you, I would, uh, we would go and have our bath over there and, and enjoy uh, just, uh, you know, uh, with our cousins. And also that's how we use the old portion as of now. And uh, as regards uh, the artifacts and all, yes, there are certain artifacts and all yet there with the family. We do have them in the new palace itself. In the archive, do you have uh, uh, written records and letters and so on? And if you do, how, how far does it go back? Uh, yeah, it, it is. Now those papers have become very sensitive. But yes, there are certain archives that we yet have. Uh, and that's uh, my mother has well kept them. The credit definitely goes to my mother to maintain uh, whatever we got as a legacy. And, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, as I mentioned, a lot of loot has also taken place in the palace. So uh, uh, things have been damaged there. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have a uh, lot of them. But yeah, some of them are yet uh, there. Yes, I mean, what you're describing is really very, very typical. It's a typical story that, um, you know, you have the older part, it gets abandoned, then you move to the new part. Very often these, uh, the older parts, the forts are used as museums, you know, if you think of Dungapur, Bikaner, or so many um, examples. Um, yes, we would want to, we would want to. In fact, that is one uh, idea that my mother is yet towing uh, to uh, create a museum there. And in fact, uh, we had even proposed this to the government and, you know, we would want the Naltar and back from the government and make uh, uh, this place as a musical, uh, as a music uh, museum. F fantastic. So there, you know, our project starting from September is just waiting to include you in this. Fantastic. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And um, so there's another question from um, um, from Naomi. Yes. And um, how does a Raja become a Maharaja? Is there a specific criteria or process? And if so, who controls the criteria in the process? Well, um, if I may say something, then I hand it over. Um, of course, we will... Uh, we can see that these transitions from Takur, Raja, Maharaja, to some extent, were, you know, were overseen by the British. And um, many times, kind of in the 19th century, uh, with the British, you know, the whole ranking system of gun salutes, and so on, this is something that they established. Um, uh, yeah, but uh, would you like to say something on this? And also, but you know, even coat of arms and so on, all of these are kind of invented traditions. They didn't exist before. And sometimes these were laymen who, who, who did this, who had an interest in um, 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 uh, heraldic. Um, and sometimes they made mistakes. They usually tried to communicate with the families, but sometimes, for instance, the shield, the Indian shield is round, of course. The European shield is not round. So, you know, certain mistakes happened with this or the wrong animal was chosen. How was it in your case, the coat of arms, the, the titles and so on? How did this work? Yeah, so as I had mentioned that, uh, it, uh, you know, uh, Mahir became an independent state by the, uh, you know, by signing the deed of uh, uh, deed of uh, uh, 
uh, this thing, uh, what do you call, uh, allegiance uh, with the British government. And then since that, that time, uh, the title Raja was given. So what I believe that when you go on a, uh, you know, how it just happens in companies that when you perform well and you just start doing well you just go to a higher level so this is probably this is how it happened that when you know when you give a lot of revenue and when a lot of development took place and you performed uh, your duties so well and you did so well for the uh, for your uh, your state that is the princely state that's when you uh, get uh, such a hierarchy so it was all assigned by uh, the british government itself when you show some performance and then you just you know you just keep going a little higher higher and then of course these were these gun salutes were also given so uh, that's when uh, you know then uh, we were also given the gun salute of uh, nine nine gun salutes was given to the state of my year then we also hear but i do not find that in the book of records that, that during my great grandfather since he was uh, uh, you know he was uh, somebody he was a great administrator and he got the title of kcie that is the knight commander of uh, the, uh, the indian M empire uh, that is uh, when he also earned the two salutes but i do not find that in the rock, uh, records uh, but that has been told to us i yet need to go in depth uh, as regards this Interesting, of course, we can really see how the Indian history is so um, intertwined with British history, right? Also for historians, you know, archives, we have to do research at the British Library um, in, in, <laughs> in the UK. And I also actually checked some of the um, German-Austrian papers and I found a reference um, in, in, in connection with the railway station that was established, right? There was a railway station going towards Jabalpur. And I think, you know, one of the earlier speakers still mentioned that uh, today. So kind of, you know, one goes by. Um, I'd like to, uh, Philip, would you like to ask another question or is your hand still up? He probably forgot. Sorry, no, I, I, my hand is still up. Sorry, I, I, I wasn't sure how to I apologize. Yes. <laughs> With this, I'd like to come um, to the end. Thank you so much. As I said, the Resilience Lecture Series is not a series that is over, but really understand it as the beginning of something. So, you know, people, scholars, uh, politicians, um, investors, you know, who have ideas, uh, business people who come up with a, with a, business proposal, we would like to be intermediaries like this and um, we collect these things. And I think because we, we are having this position, we, uh, we can compare and we are always in touch with our colleagues in, in the UK, which is, or in, in, in Europe in general, which is very helpful to have this exchange of ideas. So the really Center for Historic Houses is about building bridges building bridges between owners of historic houses and um, academics, heritage specialists and the public, with bridges between East and West, bridges between the past and the present. So I please encourage you, be active yourself. And um, be, you know, don't just listen, but do something, get involved if you are interested, if, if there's something that intrigues you, travel, try things out and become part of this. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Feedback link, feedback link, please. Um, yes, um, we mentioned the the uh, the email address. There was a slight uh, mistake. We have you know uh, volunteers who keep changing. They are new. We have a new fantastic volunteer, by the way, who created a lovely video. Um, Mevish, thank you. She's part of the University of Oxford internship scheme, and I'm very very grateful to the University of Oxford, who very generously funds and sponsors the Center for Historic Houses with paid internships and the summer internship. We had a fantastic internship pl planned and um, supported also by the royal family of Jaipur, uh, the royal family of Kapurtala and Taj hotels and we had to cancel it unfortunately because of the pandemic but Mavish is actually based in India so she is kind of participating remotely. Um, yes, so you can use, I mean, get in touch with us through the Center for Historic Houses. We are uh, always on Twitter, for example. We have a very active um, Facebook group um, each group is slightly different, most academics and so on, museum professionals use Twitter, um, Facebook is for um, owners, mainly lots of owners use it um, as a forum, as well as heritage, heritage enthusiasts and some scholars. Um, LinkedIn, we have a group as well, if you use any of these, or just send us an email, and maybe if you can just uh, check this, yes. So I just see earlier there's a post about our website, Center for Historic Houses, and that also has our email address. You can also subscribe. Um, 
Thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you very much for your kind comments. I just mentioned quickly my own um, email address in case you'd like to get in touch. Um, so this is um, at, uh, based at Jindal University in Sonipat, which is about 40 kilometers from New Delhi. Thank you so much for taking the time. And I must ask you again to participate again with your other property, of course. And I should mention one thing before I forget, our next Resilience Lecture Series on the 17th of July uh, will be on uh, Talab Gaon Palace um, in Rajasthan. Uh, Dilip Rathor will be presenting, who's a very interesting person into films and movies, um, I think uh, moving between LA and, um, and, and Rajasthan. Um, so I'm looking forward to this in uh, our very important event on the 19th of July, and I hope that Mayor Palace will be participating, is Palace Day, which we are doing in collaboration with the European Network for Royal Residences. And uh, it's really a very, very happy moment, and we all need this during the pandemic, and these kind of happy moments. <laughs> See you then. We'll be planning lots of exciting events then. All right. Bye-bye. Oh, Thank you so much. Namaste. Bye.